Hey everybody, it's Mike from Order Flows and welcome to today's video and welcome back to my channel. You know, if you've been liking the videos I've been posting recently, uh, be sure to hit the uh, subscribe button, you know, that, uh, you know, helps me get found by other traders and, you know, gives me encouragement to make more videos. Now today, uh, you know, today was an interesting day. Market had been selling off, uh, you know, all the European session and coming into the cash session. And we had a nice bounce off of it. Let me just pull up a, a quick bar chart here so you can see really quick, um, you know, what the market was doing. You know, since uh, 430, 417, we started making new lows. Uh, we dropped from about the 43, 75 and a quarter all the way down to uh, 4350 right uh, when the cash opened. And then we rallied. We rallied all the way back up into the 80s. Uh, right now it's about 230. We're trading around uh, 4381. And, you know, it's, it's interesting because oftentimes you have you know you have different market conditions and there's a market condition that i like to call a flow driven market and you know sort of coming into you know the u.s morning you know it looked like we were in a flow driven market with a lot of uh, strong selling on the way down and it was on that cash open that the market rebounded so let's take a look at the order flow um you know for any sort of signs of you know a potential reversal taking place that you know, you could have taken advantage of as a trader. Now, again, you know, 8.30 is, you know, going to be the busiest time of the day up to that point, right? Because that is when, you know, the cash market opens in New York and you get all the algos kicking off in, you know, in the futures market. So, you know, all the big orders that uh, generally will start during the cash hours, right? So 8.30, that's when all the uh, big orders start executing. Now, you know, and you can just see how the volume changes, right? The cash open bar, this is a one minute chart, 26,000. You know, the, the bar right before it was 6,000 and all the bars before it were, um, you know, even 1,000, 2,000, and even uh, less than 1,000. So, you know, trying to analyze sort of the order flow that's taking place right ahead of the cash open, you gotta realize, right, it's gonna be less volume. And once that cash opens, it's almost, sometimes it's like a whole new ball game. And, you know, when you're selling off, you know, all night or all morning into the cash open, right, going lower, 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 just making new lows with impunity, taking out whatever volumes were there. And then, you know, and, you know, at, at you know, six in the morning, four in the morning, five in the morning, you know, you, you don't get the, the same size that's sitting on the bid um, or on the offer that you would see normally during the day session. But uh, nevertheless, once we opened, right, we, we got that, we hit that low 43.50 and, you know, we traded all the way up to 57 and a quarter. So a seven point move, we closed somewhere up near the top. Uh, then what happens? Next bar also up. And that bar on the cash open, we had a very strong negative delta of 14.85 and it actually closed at minus 531. So, you know, at one point it was close to minus 1500. We closed the bar at minus 500. So there was another thousand contracts that came in that was buying to sh change that uh, min delta from minus 1485 to just minus 531. So that's important to note, right? Then obviously in the next candle, we saw some selling pressure early, right? It had a strong negative delta of 813. Delta closed at 490. Right, max delta was 492. So imagine it went from minus 800 to plus 490. So you know, basically 500. So that's a swing as well, right? Very strong negative delta, strong selling early in the bar, and it closed positive. But not only that, so it went from minus 800 back to zero, so that it gained 800 contracts back, and then plus 490. So that's almost 500. So from minus 800 back to zero, that's 800, plus another 490, 500, you know, that's uh, whatever that is, uh, 1300 contracts, right? That's a big shift in these two bars, right? That's the internals, you know, it was funny because somebody posted a comment on one of my videos the other day saying, you know, Delta doesn't matter anymore. Okay, well, you know, I, I think it does, but to each their own, right? I mean, that's what makes the markets, right? We all have differences of opinion and differences in what we think works for the market. There are some instances in the Delta analysis that I think is very useful to traders still. And what else do we see in this bar here? Well, we see a very thin print in here. We see two, right? I was talking about the volume, right, at price levels. At 43.59, when it was 59 bid at 59 and a quarter, only two contracts traded. Now this bar, 
remember, keep in mind, it traded 11,000 uh, 770 contracts, right? 11,000 spot 77K. And here at this level, you can only get two and it's holding, right? It's staying above that area. Now I have the thin prints turned off, but if I were to turn them on, you know, you're gonna see, it's just, it's really gonna stand out a lot more uh, for you as a trader. And here we go, turn it on. Now again, it's up to you to decide, you know, what you want to use as a thin print, you know, for a market like E-minis. I think you could use um, up to nine, but you know, for today, you know, we'll just use five, right? If, if you, you think nine is too much volume, now again, you could use zero, you could stick with zero. Obviously you're going to get a, a lot less, but th there's going to be instances where there's zero. I'll just keep it at five. I know traders use zero, they use one, three, five, nine. Generally, those are the numbers that uh, most of the traders that I talk to that use thin prints will look at in the E-minis, okay? Obviously, if you're trading something like mini Dow, you'd probably want to keep it at uh, two or three. But for E-minis, you know, it's a little bit more subjective. And depending on the type of chart you're trading, this is a one-minute chart, you got to understand what sort of volume, okay? So I'll just show you, I setting it at five, people say, well, you only set it at five because that's a two. Well, okay, fine. If I set it at zero, it's not going to show up, but I know two is still a thin volume, right? There's always got to be people out there that got to throw stones at, 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 at everything, okay? But still, regardless if it was um, two or zero, that's still a thin volume, right? Market next bar went up, didn't even pull back into that two until about three bars later, okay? And you can see there's even prices from earlier, but again, you know, We'll just turn off the two. We'll set it to zero because I'm sure someone will say, well, you know, you're, you're just cherry picking this. But again, you got to understand two contracts is still thin. Okay, It's, it's up to you to decide. I am, the default, I think, on, on the order post trader is actually set to nine. But if you have it at zero, nevertheless, okay, we'll just keep it at zero and see, you know, where else the zeros appear. Um, let's give it a second here to come up. And... You know, so you have the delta shift, right? We saw that in these two bars right after the cash open, okay? And then we sort of go up and then go sideways, right? We're just trading sideways, um, more or less, and then we sort of pop back up again, right? Sort of break out of this little area between 67 and, you know, 62. So we're more or less trading in a five range uh, zone. Now, you know, another thing that I like to use when I'm looking at the order flow is the value areas, right? The value areas of the bars. Right now they're turned off, but you know, when I turn them on, let's take a look and see how it looks, okay? Value area, engulfing value area. Let's click apply and come on, you know, we create all these tools to help you as a trader, you know, see things a lot easier rather than sit here trying to say, oh, what does this mean? What does that mean? You know, you wanna be able to identify things happening in the order flow as soon as they happen, okay? And what do we have here, right? Well, right off this low, we got an engulfing value area, which is bullish. We have a, a value area here that's not traded back into in the next bar, which is also bullish. We have another value area, which is not traded back into the next bar, also bullish. So what do we got? We got three bullish order uh, value areas right off the low. We have a gap here in the value um, between the value area high of this bar and the value area low of this bar. Now, you know, the... The ICT boys out there, they're going to say, well, you got a fair value gap, right? Because I talk about value gaps. Um, and when, when I talk about value gaps in value, what I mean is from the value area of one bar to the value area of another bar, just as if you were using a uh, volume profile, and market profile, you would talk about gaps in the value from one day to the next day, if there was, was one. But, you know, ICT guys will say, well, you have the high here of this bar and the low of this bar, and you have this void, you know, they call them voids. Um, in here, and you can see how the market traded back in there. Okay, there's a lot of times, you know, to me that's a bit like candlestick analysis. It works when it works, and when it doesn't work, you know, they don't say anything. But um, it's clear when you're looking at the actual value areas to understand what's happening, right? Why does the market pull back, you know, literally right to this level? It's, it's that area where you have the thin volume, and, you know, that's where the end of the value area was. Right, just like in this bar, it trades back into this value area. Okay, so that's right off the bat, you, you're seeing a lot of bullish things in, in the market, right? You're seeing the delta change internally, you're seeing the value areas giving you some bullish signs. 
Um, you're seeing some signs in the volume, actual volume of the order flow. It's giving you some nice bullish signs, right? So as, as we go up, um, you know, we, we get all the way up here to, uh, what was that, 73, 72 and a quarter. Come off a bit and then just go sideways, dip down in here. Now we're starting to see, again, some more bullish order flow coming in here, right? The value area that's abandoned, value area that's abandoned. Here's your zero print, right? Market sort of works its way back up. Where does this market come back to? And it holds. It comes right back to this value area, right? Then it starts working its way back up. Um, and it gets all the way back up into the 70s again. Now here we've got a bearish value area, right? That's not tested. Um, we have a slingshot point of control. We have a zero print in there, and it's an engulfing value area. Market starts to sell off, just goes sideways. You know, at this point, this is where I was looking for the market to you know, kind of really want to sell off. And the fact that it's just holding inside there for one, two, three, four, you know, five bars finally gets past it here. You know, when, when you trade back into a value area, there's a couple of things you want to pay attention to. One, does it trade into it and reject it like here where it trades into it and starts rejecting it? The best ones are where they trade back into it and reject it in the same bar and move away from it pretty quick. Right. You don't necessarily want it to come back in and sort of just, you know, spend a lot of time trading in there, just like we're doing here. Right. And eventually it popped up because, you know, if you've ever studied market profile, um, you know, you know, read all the books on market profile. You, you should know that, you know, the on a daily profile. Right. Sometimes, you know, the best moves of the day come when you go back into the day's value, you know, the, the the value area and trade all the way through right and can go keep going higher what you have here is you trade back into it for one two three four five bars right and even you know six bars starting right up on the on the high of the value area so at this point when you're trading up here you know you shouldn't be looking for it to start to sell off so if you're short in here you got to cover it already in here and then the market you know starts working its way back up 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 back into the 80s okay then uh, we start selling off. So again, if you're looking at the charts, right, you see what well, time is it now? It's about 2.40, 2.48 going into the cash close. We're actually making new highs. Let's take a look at that right now because that's uh, sort of a new development since I started talking um, on this video. Um, okay, so we started <coughs> moving up from you know, this lowish area in here, you know, coming off, coming down. We've got a bullish pound of point of control. Um, got the zero print in that bar. I mean, I do see this green zone being drawn out from earlier. Um, that's obviously here. That's abandoned value area. So that was holding. Um, again, we start working our way up, starting to see some bullish order flow, uh, bullish prominent point of control here. Again, this yellow line is the opening price. Um, you, know, you do have a abandoned value area here, which is nice, but then it just sort of goes sideways, pulls back down through. Then you get another one here. You got a gap in the value here that's pretty wide, a couple of ticks, another abandoned value area. So you got one, two abandoned value areas, which is a strong sign on its own, right? Anytime you get two value areas that are abandoned like this, that are not traded over the next into in the next two bars, that's a strong sign. And, you know, we're working our way back up to uh, new highs up here. So again, you know, something to look for, abandoned value area, abandoned value area, two consecutive Right. If you just sort of go back and you look for, you know, honestly, if you were to go back, you know, over time and look for two in a row, um, I know there was that one early in the day. I don't know if there was any late. Here's one, two here. Right. This bar, this bar, got a little bit of a move down, pull back, a little move lower. Okay. Um, uh, there's one right after the open. Right. If you remember, one, two. Right. Again. Pulls back through the first value area, tests the second value area. So again, if you're buying somewhere in here, you know, between these value areas, what is that? Uh, 50, you know, 59 or 60 area, right up into the 70s. So it's a nice 10 point move. So again, you know, everybody, order flow is a great tool. All right, it's not a, it's not a holy grail. It's not a trading system by itself. It's, it's data that you can analyze and and make. Um, inform trading decisions off of and you know a tool like my tool like the order flows trader and that's why I developed it is to help my own trading in the past I mean I didn't want to get into selling software but a lot of people I started sharing it with some other traders and they're like hey 
Can I get a copy um, when they see my charts? Because, you know, we started adding certain features onto it. And they're like, hey, you know what? I could use that in my trading. So it's all about understanding what's taking place in the market. Okay, nothing more. All right. So if you like this video, be sure to hit uh, the subscribe channel, the subscribe button, rather, if you haven't, subscribe to my channel. And, uh, you know, leave some comments. I, I try to take a look at the comments every once in a while. And, you know, I do reply every so often. So thanks, everyone. Have a great day. Bye-bye.